As the great Irving Yalom stated, the therapist is themselves a tool to be used within the practice of psychotherapy. This means the presence the therapist is able to cultivate in session will depend on their ability to be healthy and grounded themselves before and throughout the therapy session. Part of caring for the patient is caring for yourself and ensuring that you are ready and able to give proper treatment to your clients. Wise, Hirsch, and Gibson argued in their study t- entitled Ethics, Self-Care, and Well-Being for Psychologists that self-care is an essential ethical obligation, and they quote as evidence the last sentence of General Principle A, Benefits, and Non-Malfeasance in the APA Code of Ethics, which states, Psychologists strive to be aware of the possible effect of their own physical and mental health on their ability to help those with whom they work. So if the therapist is impaired by their own lack of self-care and issues with their own mental health, they will not be able to provide proper and sufficient treatment to clients. And they could, in fact, do more harm than good. Examples of this could include being late for appointments with clients, failing to report uh, complete reports in a timely manner or return phone calls, having poor clinical judgment, and being at greater risk of ethical breaches such as boundary violations, power abuses, and inappropriate emotional involvement with clients. Psychotherapy is a grueling, demanding, and difficult field to be in, though it can be incredibly rewarding, which is likely why most of us are here. Therapeutic practice requires the therapist to hold and hear devastating stories from clients. We are immersing ourselves purposefully into the inner worlds of people who are in pain and in need with the hopes of helping them but there are high costs to caring, empathy, and emotional investment in helping the suffering. Listening to client stories of fear, pain, and suffering can cause the therapist to experience feelings of similar fear, pain, and suffering because they care. Psychotherapists, by the very nature of the work that we do, are prone to compassion fatigue, a kind of caregiver burnout. Compassion fatigue is defined as a state of tension and preoccupation with the traumatized patients by re-experiencing the traumatic events avoidance, numbing of reminders, and persistent anxiety associated with the patient. It is a function of bearing witness to the suffering of others. The potential negative impact of working directly with clients who have histories of trauma, including sexual and physical abuse, experiences of military combat, and single traumatic incidents, has been discussed within the psychological community for at least two decades and the DSM Diagnostic Criteria for the Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder acknowledges that learning about traumatic events experienced by a family member or close friend can, in and of itself, lead to symptoms of PTSD. Such symptoms might also happen in therapists exposed to narratives of traumatic events. Psychotherapists tend to view themselves as others view them, someone who is an expert at helping others cope with life's challenges. They sometimes seem to forget that they are human beings as well. A physician sometimes gets sick and needs another physician's services, for example. An important part of self-care for the therapist is to recognize and understand that this emotional toll and pressure are part of being a therapist and that we must all work to manage it. We are not the only therapists in danger of burnout or other forms of mental stress from the work that we do. Recognize that you are in need of care as much as others are worthy of it.